Welcome back. This is your boy Carcino for Life here. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the things that people aren't really mentioning right now, but needs to be spoken on. The NBA, the National Basketball Association. Do you realize that the National Basketball Association, the NBA, is having difficulties? People are like, what? What difficulties? Oh, yeah, the China thing. Oh, the China thing set them back, and they're losing. Now the NBA was doing really well with their television deal, and they do real well on social media. They're almost three times the National Football League when it comes to social media. All their personality and all of their athletes going on their profiles, sharing videos and pictures and everything the nba has a stranglehold on having these guys doing charity events everything well the nfl they kind of restrict the rights that the um the players have to post selfies and all of these different things that you could do memes all these things uh could come back to hurt you if you're an nfl player there's very limited things that you can actually post as an NFL player, which makes the people almost non-existent. You know, you have to really stand out and be a Odell Beckham and make yourself hot to the point where the NFL still don't even try to promote you. You know, the NFL promotes team. That's it. It's very seldomly does they promote a player. Tom Brady's an exception to the rule. But they still predominantly promote team. And the reason why they do that, because players in the NFL, they don't last very long. Even superstar players, one blow and that player could be gone. Now, if all the attention is just because this player is playing on your team, well, he's not playing today. So now what, what you have? Now you got to watch the rest of the guys. But when you promote team, you promote logo, now there's a difference. Now there's a brand that people are going to follow. Different players are going to come, but the logo remains. And this is why the NFL is very successful. The NBA marketing model is player more than team. They run it pretty much like a soap opera drama. And this has helped and hurt the NFL all together. I will explain. The NFL and the NBA have run into a new age era. The NBA has a 24, what's that, 27 or 24 billion dollar deal for nine years with ESPN. ESPN and um, some uh, some other marketing networks for cable. I think TNT, ESPN and TNT. I think it comes out to like 27 billion that they got for their television deal. Now, what a television deal! Uh, it was about 27 billion for nine years, I believe. I might be off a little bit, but anyway, they were toasted very high. They got that deal because of the evaluation that was built up when the Clippers got bought. It made the numbers look funny, and this is why I told you numbers do lie. No other team was valued over a billion before, and now some teams are valued just at a billion dollars. That 2.4 billion that they purchased the team for really brought a whole different change of element to the game. 
They really did. Because now, now that they had this change of element, they have people that's involved that don't really need to be. So you're seeing things transpire that don't need to transpire or don't need to be at all. You're seeing oversaturation by the National Basketball Association. And social media came along and they looked at this was a good a, a good way to expand to their billions and billions of followers and connect to them and this is going to just grow the brand to ex exponentially going to make us all double and triple the money as most people have found out who already know about social media understand that because you have 50 million uh, 100 million followers does not mean you're going to have even one million dollars out of it. There are plenty of celebrities here who have product that they try to sell to their fans and their followers and don't get one percent of those fans to purchase or buy anything that they're promoting. Because the people that follow them is only following them just to hear what they're going to say on social media. Then they're going to turn and go to the other person that they follow on social media. They're not really avid fans of the game. And that's what you're faced with here. And this is what the NBA ran into. They spent all of this marketing on social media and letting the players go out and promote and do all these things on the social media platform to boost up the ratings for the game. Social media came in and turned the thing upside down because the NBA make the majority of their money on the cable side of it and the ESPN and the paid cable subscriptions beside that doesn't count their, you know, prime games that they play on ABC that they're the main feature games. Their other games are predominantly on cable where the NFL don't have this problem. Their games are predominantly all on national television. So they have the prime peak and they're not really hurt by the streaming. See, the streaming services is coming in and people are trying to find a way to monetize it to where we have to readjust how we're going to pay out the, you know, for revenue now because of the way it's formed. So a lot of movement was put in place. And as you can see, there are teams that were losing money. 14 teams in the NBA were reporting losses while everyone else is thinking everything is thriving. And one of the reasons, or one of the main reasons, are this these fans the ones that eat actually come to the game they're so interested in coming to the game recording things on their phones and sharing clips on social media <coughs> these clips does not help anyone who's watching the game these clips service people who are interested in only that they want to see the highlights they're not going to sit back and watch the whole two-hour game they don't feel a need to unless they know what's going on besides the game and what's this or if it's a big game then they'll pay attention other than that they don't really care they'll just watch the highlights and that's what's wrong with the league. People are watching highlights. You have ESPN putting out promotional highlights. You have all these other YouTubers now in social media promoting highlights. And they're making a whole video of just highlights. So people are like, wow, I could watch that and get the game. But sometimes the NBA does not see a cent of that money from those videos. And whatever it is monetized that is not worth what they would be getting, you know, per view if there's someone purchased a ticket. 
And then after the next day, no one really cares about the game that was played. Needless to say, you have new problems on the horizon. Too much attachment to LeBron James. Never in the history of sports have a player have been promoted as much as this. Even Michael Jordan wasn't promoted like this. Due to social media, due to all of the avenues that they have for marketing and promotion that wasn't out, during the Kobe era or the Jordan era is definitely out during the LeBron rise. And LeBron is overly exceeded everything that they've actually done. He actually should probably get a percentage from the NBA because they actually should be paying him like astronomical amount of money because he basically sells the NBA as if He's a part owner of the NBA. He does. That's one thing I can never say. This is what the NBA, LeBron is what the NBA would want their athlete to be. Dedicated to the logo at all costs. Because he has an ego problem. He's a narcissistic person who loves attention. So he's going to do the work for you. He's going to go out there and make the videos. He's going to Kool-Aid smile. He's going to do all these little marketing commercials you want him to do because he wants his face out there so much on every little thing. He'll do Sesame Street if you want him to. He'll dress in a clown outfit if you want him to. LeBron James will do all of these things that you want him to do. And it's the NBA's job to try to make him look like the most invincible thing in the world, even though the whole world knows that he isn't. So everyone has to pretend LeBron James is extraordinary, and he's just this all-time unstoppable force. Even though people know it's BS, it sells the league. So they want everybody to just play ball and go with this fake narrative. But the problem is everything you're doing is attached to LeBron. So when LeBron doesn't play and the other games come along, you see the drop off. Yes, the Laker games are up in revenue or they're doing great on certain nights. The ratings go up a little bit and sometimes they actually fold. But what we've seen happen over the years is that once this happens with LeBron, the next game that follows it hits the floor. Then you have great teams playing each other, but no one's watching. They made the West Coast games a little bit earlier with the start time so that on the East Coast, people wouldn't turn the game off so quickly and go to bed because the games are being played too late. So they're trying to speed up some of these games in the, for the West Coast to have them come on at a, you know, a quicker time, which is leading to a lot of seats being empty when the game starts because a lot of people are on their way to the games and the, the traffic in L.A., people are getting off work. It's a bit of a hassle. See, these are things that the natural, casual fan don't care about because they're going to sit at that home and watch it. And now most people are not even going to the games. They'll just say, I'll watch it from home or I'll stream it on YouTube or any other platform. The NBA has created a market in which there's different turns of events that are changing by the day. New streaming methods, new ideas. So, yeah, they're not in a position where they can afford, like, this whole thing here with the corona thing mixed with what happened in China. Yeah, they're losing a lot of money. Believe me, they're losing a lot of money. But when the season resumes, they will 100% come back. They're going to swallow a $500 million plus hit in tickets for the rest of the regular season when they do come back. Because they want to play those games out with nobody in the seats and then go right to the playoffs 
and then try to have fans come back for the playoffs. That's the plan. Now, here is the biggest problem. When they do return, you have to think about ratings. The NBA is going to, with all of this happened now, they are going to be forced to have to put LeBron James in the NBA Finals. What happens in the NBA Finals after that, I don't know if they even care. Long as they have LeBron in the NBA Finals, they're going to need those ratings to be up. And the reason they're going to need those ratings to be up, and LeBron knows this too, that's why he's very confident, very happy, the way the season's going, because now he knows all he has to do is get on the court. The league is going to carry them and push them into the NBA Finals. They need him. They need him. See, LeBron is someone what they call the anti-hero. He's the hero when he needs to be and the villain when they need him to be. Steph Curry is the protagonist, okay? He is the hero. He can never be, he's a baby face in what you would call him wrestling. This guy can never be a villain. You can never make Steph Curry or his team villains. They're the good guys. So LeBron will be basically the, the good guy all until he plays Steph Curry. Then... He is a anti-hero. That's the only time you will see him get close to playing a villain. When they played him at Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis is the villain. LeBron is the old hero. Giannis, he becomes like the anti-hero for that moment. They want to make these leagues at the Luka Dantes. They want to promote these younger guys, but they put so much into promoting LeBron, they overdid it. Now no one cares about anybody else because you didn't really pour any promotion into anything that was moving. Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors, they made themselves high. Curry made everything high because he was making all those threes. So Steph made his own bed. So, yeah, when the Golden War State Warriors are clicking on all cylinders, then, yeah, boom. You got somebody that can go up against LeBron, and Steph can do his numbers, and they're going to rise every time he plays. Now, all the NBA stars are hurt. What's that going to do for your league? It's been great basketball, but we cannot get what you want to see as a people. We can't get that notoriety or that casual fan because the NBA failed in promoting the actual game. All the sports shows are wrapped around LeBron James. All the entertainment, ESPN specials, everything's wrapped around LeBron James. So if you continuously do this, when he steps away from the game, what happens to your league? Oh, we're going to build these other guys up by then, so when he steps away, these guys will be ready? It don't work like that. These guys are already here. Giannis is here. Curry is already here. Pretty soon, Curry is going to be stepping out. He's in his 30s. Guys are getting older, and you're wasting their good years by promoting somebody you should have been putting to pastures. But you can't afford to right now because of certain events. You got to continue to milk this cow. Even though dust and powder is coming out, you're still trying to milk this cow to see if there's any bitty little drips of milk you can get out of it. So sure, let's break all the rules. Let's stack the deck. Let's do all of these things that are counterproductive. And that's why the NBA is in the bind it is. 
when Michael Jordan was there, they promoted Michael Jordan as if it was Michael Jordan, but the league had stars. If Michael Jordan didn't play the, the, the marquee game, if the Knicks played Indiana, people watch. If Charles Barkley and the Knicks played the Houston Rockets, I mean, Charles Barkley and the Suns played the Houston Rockets, with Akeem Olajuwon, people watched that game. People watched other games. Each team, and my, my mother, who was a casual fan now, she barely watches the game, said they were playing the, the replay games, and she saw the games, and what she said, man, everybody, it seemed like back in the day, every team had like a superstar on it. It was, Back in the day. That's why it was fun. Because everybody had like a star. They had Carl Malone. They had Charles Barkley. They had Drexler. See, that's back when I remember the players. I don't know who these guys are now. But each team had like a superstar. You see? It was competition. And my mom is about as casual as she's going to get it. Because she remembers Kobe and Shaq. She knows of LeBron, but she barely watches him. She don't know why I, I ride him so hard. But that's it. That's all she really knows. She don't. She barely. She don't know who Steph Curry is. She definitely don't know who Giannis is. She don't know who James Harden is. She don't know any of these other players. She knows LeBron James. She don't even know Anthony Davis. My mom don't even know who Steph Curry is. The only player she know in the NBA, one was Dwayne Wade, he just retired. <laughs> and the other one, LeBron James. So that tells you right there, she is a representative of a casual fan. Now, the league is going to have to go back to the negotiating table, and it's going to be ugly because the owners are going to want a lot of changes. Players have a lot of leeway, and they thought it was one big party, and they abused it. And now, now they got to realize that they're going to have to pay that piper. They got to pay that piper. So, on that note, it's your boy Carcino. I'm out. Hopefully this video explained a lot to you. Hopefully you got a lot of information out of it. That's what I pray. And y'all be safe. And don't forget, you can donate to the page by hitting the cash app up. My name is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. And yes... In the Patreon today, we did put out that video. If you're a Patreon VIP member, you already saw it. Exclusive photo was sent to me. Jamal Crawford, not Jamal Crawford, <laughs> Jamal Murray, girlfriend was at it again with a whole nother dude. Oh, yeah. She's back in her fallacious ways. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs>